All right, I guess you all know my presentations on the Panopticon. And uh, <coughs> the man who gets credit for the Panopticon is Jeremy Betham. He was born February 15th, 1748, and he died June 6th, 1832. He was 84 years old when he died. He lived in London, England, and uh, he went to his grave without even seeing a Panopticon ever being built. He worked 16 years perfecting the Panopticon. This is one of his more complex designs. This is not the one that's uh, showing in our textbook. This is a little more complicated. Uh, this is the one in our textbook. And this is the one I saw, and I looked at it, and I said, this is, I can build this. I can build this. And, that, and that's where I got the idea to build the Panopticon. And we all know who this is. This is Paul Michael Foucault. Uh, he was born in October of 1926, and he died in June 1984. He died at the early age of 57 in France. Foucault builds on Jeremy Bentham's uh, Panopticon in Discipline and Punish, The Birth of a Prison. It was published in 1975. Using the Panopticon, he uh, dis demonstrates the disciplinary mechanism where we all know separation, observation, and of course, record keeping. And I wanted to show you this picture I found because the artist did a good job. This is the inside of a Panopticon. And as you can see, uh, you can see the inmate, he's on his knees and looking out to the power, what I call the power, and that's the tower that's forever watching. And uh, that gave me a feeling of what it must have felt like inside of one of these prisons. Now, we're getting to my scale model of the Panopticon. This is the actual drawing I, uh, I drew before I even started it. Uh, something, something you might want to do before you even start home projects, always make a sketch. I've been in building all my life. Sit down and draw it out before you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, and I guarantee you you'll finish your project with not so many trips back and forth to the hardware store. Uh, as you can see here, let's see, it's to scale. One inch equals two inches equals ten feet. This is the model. Thank you. All right, so going by the scale, uh, let's say I was a builder and I was unfamiliar with this project. So all I have to do is go up to the model. I have eight inches. That would tell me that this is four stories because one inch equals two inches on the model. Okay, two inches equals ten feet. So this exterior wall would be 40 feet tall. Each story is ten feet tall. Uh, and so in your watchtower, they have op observation to see outside the roof section of the Panopticon. So they have to be in the fifth floor to even view the outside of it. Um, see, am I forgetting anything? Okay, uh, back to the drawing. Before I start any project, I always sit down and draw it. It's always the first thing you do. And it reminds me of what Dr. Eskew taught us with a thesis statement. We had to have a thesis statement to start our research papers. This would be the thesis statement in building. We would always refer back to this statement to make sure we're on track. All the way through the project, I've been on uh, projects where you couldn't even read the blueprints 
We've had to go back and forth to them so many times. Every part of the building, you have to keep referring back to the blueprints. And we have worn them out and we've had to order new copies because so many people goes to them and looks up what dimensions of maybe a window, a door, the roof section, or what have you. So the drawing is always first and foremost. And like I say, it's kind of like the thesis statement. It reminds me of that. So uh, I'm able to, to uh, use my experience in building with writing. So I was able to bring that together. And I think that's really neat. Um, this is early constructions in the shop. The reason I want to use this is because right in here, this would be your support system. Now, in, see, the problem with the Panopticon when you're building one, and this is the problem I went to, went, ran into. Now, when you're building a scale model, it can be just as difficult as building the actual building. And I'll tell you why, because when, when after the architecture's done, and the inspectors are there, they'll go by the model to check the building a lot of times. And then they'll go back to the blueprints that we talked about. <laughs> but right here is the support system. Now, back in Jeremy's time, when he was drawing the Panopticon, or designing it, now all, all the av available materials was wood. So, this support system would have had to be five feet wide. That takes a lot of timber. Now, if you compare the 19th century with the 21st century, today we have concrete and we can get it in just about, well, we get hydraulic concrete, we get any kind of concrete you want that will withstand the pressure. Now, we can reduce this support system down to one foot. And that's saying a lot. Go from five feet to one foot. Now, the problem with a five-foot support system is that you're going to do away with some of your um, surveillance. You're going to lose surveillance there. But it, you just have to count that as a loss and keep building. And that's what they did. Uh, now this is showing the roof system. N now looking at this, this is what I call a five degree roof system. These are the trust, and then the panels go on top. Now if you notice, it's, it's almost hard to see even a slant here, but because it's only five degrees. What would make this a southern prison? When you look at this, why would you say that's a southern prison? Because of the roof system. Up north, they have to have a 45 degree slant because of snow. Snow's heavy. There's no way snow would even fall off this building. So this building could only be built in the south, which is a lot less expensive, and we can house more prisoners that way. Let's see. All right, now we're getting to the tower. This is uh, where the observation begins, part of the mechanism. This is where the guards would be. As you see, there's got to be a floor for every floor in the prison. So you'd have one guard for every floor. But the beauty of this thing was the power was in the tower. So in other words, if they only had one guard on duty, the prisoners wouldn't know the difference. They don't know who's watching them and who's not. But it takes the whole mechanism according to Foucault. Now this is showing, uh, let's see, this is showing the main frame and this in construction this is what we call dried in. If you call an electrician, he's going to say, what day can you have it dried in? If you call a plumber, he's going to say, what day is it going to be dried in? That means the framers come in and they frame up the whole outside 
do the roof, and the plumbers and electricians can come in and go to work then because they won't be in the weather any longer. So framers will work in the weather, they'll work, they'll just work. Um, so after it's dried in, the framers can come back out and start the exterior walls. As you can see, it's just like this. Uh, while they're working on the exterior of the building, this looks like a federal building to me, but um, while they're working on the exterior of the building, the plumbers, electricians, and everybody else that's hanging fixtures to everything else can be working on the inside and nobody's getting in each other's way. And that's why you try to coordinate the jobs so everybody's constantly working. Uh, All right, this is the uh, picture of the in, inside of the Panopticon. This shows the tower, and then you can see the bars and the sails in there. Uh, here it's complete, but there's one problem. And I, I went through and I researched, and I couldn't figure out how to put steps in there. And I'm sure uh, Jeremy had the same problem with his drawing. Now, I found this picture where they put spiral staircases in, but this is dangerous. If you have, if you're trying to get 25 men up these steps handcuffed, it's practically impossible. It, it, it'd just be too dangerous to have these steps. So I'm sure that's why he really had a problem with this whole design for 16 years because I can't figure out how to put steps on. Now, in uh, this century, we can put elevators in. We can do a lot of things to promote this building, and there's a lot of prisons in the United States built just like this. But they have elevators, and they have inside stairways. But uh, back then, they just didn't have the materials uh, available to do something like that. Now we can demonstrate the whole uh, discipline mechanism. If I turn this around like this. Did you put little windows inside it? Oh, yeah. I thought I saw some shiny plastic. <laughs> uh, you saw the bars probably. This is 400 and 423 pieces uh, crafted and sanded. Um, this shows the divisions. In other words, these would be the sails right here. These are the support. Now you'd have that if now if you completed the building, you would have six supports. And the whole time, you're still cutting back on observation. So you're doing everything you can to keep it open as possible. Now, now in this century, we wouldn't have a problem with that. But back then, they had a large problem with it. Because remember, these things are five feet wide. And when you have six of those, uh, that's 30 feet you've lost right there. OK, so here you have your separation. This is the tower. As you can see, there's, there's a floor for every floor on the building uh, with steps going up. Now this would be the observation and this would be the record keeping. The, I went through a lot of prison records, uh, things like that, and I decided to go with this one. <coughs> Uh, because it's ex execution day for these three prisoners. And if you'll notice it, 1.14 a.m., they, they reported the inmate was vomiting. Uh, they evidently gave him some medicine, and it upset his stomach. He started vomiting. They had to call in the nurse and then remove the handcuffs so he could vomit and clean himself up because they weren't allowed to go in and out of the cell. Uh, Next uh, point of interest, if you'll notice, they, everything they did that day is logged in. At 208, Mr. Frank King 
the prison priest comes for a visit to talk with uh, Mr. Denton. And uh, let's see, I believe it's Pat Bain was a spiritual advisor for Russo. Okay, at 3.54 p.m., the inmates got their last shower. Um, and then at 7.09 p.m., uh, the, the prisoners were pronounced dead. And, of course, uh, there was an hour apart between the two, and one of them got to stay. But I just wanted to show you an example of the record keeping that's a part of the whole mechanism. It takes all three to make the mechanism. Like Dr. Eskew explained about the lock, it takes the tumblers, the key, everything to work that mechanism. Uh, and this is the mechanism. Like I say, you have separation, observation, and record keeping. So, Foucault predicted that this would happen modern day observation. This man is watching, you can't really see it here, it's too distorted, but it's actually just streets. He's watching all the traffic lights, uh, people running the light, this type of thing. He can photograph your tag number and this is going on more and more. We're observed at the bank, we're observed at school, we're observed just about everywhere we go in parking lots and uh, it's basically because of crime. And uh, I did want to show you this, if you can see it with all the lights on. This will show you by holding a light. Now this is from the tower. I don't know, can y'all, is this eye level? Can you see the light through the windows? That's what, it, now in the dark, you can see that every cell is illuminated. So, if you pretend this is the eyeball, and the light shining is the field of vision, kind of like if I use the, the um, if I shine this through here, this would be the eyeball, and that would be the field of vision. And I can actually, well, I nearly got you in the eye. So I can actually go through here and hit every window and it comes out on the other side. So you can see that they can see every cell from this tower. So that pretty much concludes my presentation. But the last thing I want to say is I am giving this to Dr. Eskew as a learning tool. I hope she can use it and I hope other students can learn from it and it's from the whole class, not just me, and I would like for everybody to sign it before you leave, and I got different colored pens, and she can always remember. <laughs> Thank you.